Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what we know from the Sheriff's Office at this time, and then we'll have that followed by some additional information from some of our partners up here. Uh, at 7.11 p.m. last evening, our suspect was encountered in a remote area of western Wisconsin by a citizen from Vernon County, who then became suspicious and contacted the Vernon County Sheriff's Office. It was determined that Jakubowski was staying in a primitive campsite in a rural private property off of County Road U near the Vernon and Richland County line, just south of Viola, Wisconsin. Vernon County Sheriff John Spears and Richland County Sheriff James Bedell directed local law enforcement authorities to set up a perimeter at this location. Rock County Sheriff's Office was contacted Investigators, along with tactical support from the investigation, were sent to Vernon County to assist local law enforcement. Tactical units spent several hours early this morning moving into position to safely make contact with our suspect. Shortly before 6 a.m. this morning, tactical officers made contact where he was positively identified as Jakubowski and was taken into custody without incident. We are grateful for a safe resolution to this public safety threat. During the course of this lengthy investigation, there were no injuries to the public, to law enforcement, or to the, the suspect himself. <clears throat> Jakubowski will be transported to the Rock County Sheriff's Office and detained in the county jail. It is anticipated that Jakubowski will face at least three local felony charges related to the gunshot burglary on April 4, 2017. I have to tell you that in, more, in my 29 years of law enforcement, I have never seen this level of investigative partnership between state, local, and federal authorities. I would especially like to thank the FBI for bringing all of their assets, all of their agents, analysts, and the many other support personnel that they provided in this investigation. I would also like to thank the ATF, the State of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin State Patrol, and the Janesville Police Department as well for all of their efforts in this. On behalf of all the men and women that were assigned to this case, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to the local citizens and businesses and volunteer organizations for their overwhelming support. We have received numerous donations throughout the week of food and cards and just general well wishes from our public. And so I'm, as Sheriff of Rock County, again, I want to express my gratitude and thanks, my thanks to all of our partners here at the table. And with that, I will turn it over to Chief of Police, David Moore. Good afternoon. I stand before you representing a very grateful Rock County and Janesville community. I can tell you that our citizens have been very cautious over the last eight to ten days. They've been very patient, but today they are very grateful for the work of everybody that is at uh, this table. I want you to consider for a moment the uniqueness of this investigation. Make no mistake, what could have happened here was a mass shooting. That was our concern. And many times when we have these mass shootings, the first indication we have of it is the mass shooting, the deaths. And then the investigation starts, and we find out who did what, when, and how, and who knew along the way that this was to be. That's not the case with this investigation. We were very fortunate that we were able to learn of the document offered by Mr. Jacobowski and sent to the White House. We were fortunate to know of the burglary and the large amount of weapons that were stolen. We were fortunate to know of his very involved plan and his prompt disappearance afterwards. So all of this alerted us that we needed a very uh, quick and thorough investigation. And it ended um, just as we had anticipated and how we had hoped. It ended because a citizen gave a clue. It's 
time and time again across this nation, we solve major crimes because a citizen will step up and offer a clue or a comment or an observation which gives us that clue and we can solve this case. That was the case in this. And also, we could not have asked for this matter to end better. No one was hurt, no officers were harmed, and Mr. Jacobowski was taken into custody without any injuries. Now, while this all ended well, I can tell you that everybody at this table is in it for the long haul. We were looking out not in terms of days, but in terms of weeks for sustaining this investigation. We were set up for a long-term investigation, and we had the assets in place in the event that something of a tragic nature occurred. All of these assets were in place because of local law enforcement, the Rock County Sheriff's Department, the FBI, the ATF, DC State BCI, US Postal Inspectors, and many others that helped us during this investigation. It was significant. It is a law enforcement footprint that this county has not seen before, and I'll suggest to you it is of epic proportions. We'd like to offer our thank you to the Janesville community and the citizens of Janesville. Sheriff Spolden and I lead communities that trust the police. And that trust uh, proved to be important through this investigation. It allowed us to provide police services without a great amount of fear in our communities. It allowed us to continue with this investigation without interference. And through this investigation, over 700 clues came in. And many of those came from Rock County. Many of them came from Janesville. And that's the trusting environment that we uh, are able to have here in Rock County and Janesville, Wisconsin. And in closing, I can tell you today that uh, today is truly a very good Friday for all of us here in Rock County. And now, um, Special Agent in Charge for the FBI, Justin Colomino. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Again, I am uh, Justin Tolomeo, the Special Agent in Charge of the FBI in Milwaukee Division. As Chief Moore mentioned, today is a good day for the Wisconsin community. A little after 6 in the morning, Richland and Ver Vernon County Sheriff's Deputies, FBI SWAT agents from Milwaukee, Chicago, and Minneapolis field offices, along with officers from the Rock County Sheriff and agents from the Wisconsin Department of Justice Division of Criminal Investigation took Jacobowski into custody in Reedstown, Wisconsin. And at this time, I want to stress, with his arrest, there is no other credible threat related to him in the Wisconsin community. I want to congratulate all our law enforcement partners for their professionalism and sheer determination that brought us to the results we have today. He said all along we wanted a peaceful resolution to this situation. And today, we have that conclusion. Today's arrest was a result of seamless integration and cooperation between 26 agencies, 18 local, 2 state, and 6 federal. More than 250 men and women in law enforcement came together from different agencies for one public safety mission, the one we are thankful for today. As the chief mentioned, over 400, excuse me, over 700 leads were documented and explored in an effort, in an effort to apprehend Jakubowski. As soon as we knew of the threat to the community, the FBI mobilized. Men and women from out the, throughout the organization stepped forward from right here in Milwaukee, our headquarters in Washington, D.C., and Quantico, Virginia, as well as eight other field offices. As big as the FBI is, it proved through this investigation that it could be agile in bringing personnel and resources to bear for a community that needs it. In addition to the federal weapons charges Jacobowski currently faces, the full scale of his actions are under review along with the U.S. Attorney's Office, and we will be considering additional charges 
uh, in the future. Just want to provide a few details about the arrest. As noted, it happened a little after 6 a.m. this morning. As the sheriff mentioned, he was found under a tarp. There were four handguns, one long gun, multiple boxes of ammunition, one samurai-like sword, a helmet and ballistic vest, containers of flammable liquids, and a copy of his manifesto. Although apprehended, we continue to investigate the full nature and scope of his activity, and this investigation will continue. Thank you. I will now introduce Assistant Special Agent in Charge Joel Lee. This is a, indeed a, a very good Friday. Um, first of all, I would like to let everybody know who I am. I am Lee. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for the ATF here in the state of Wisconsin. I would like to thank all of the agencies that you see here today for <laughs> what seems like it's been a very long time, but it has been a very intense period because we had a very lofty goal, and sometimes during the during the various trials and tribulations of going through this, this incident, sometimes we were wondering would we be able to accomplish our very lofty goal. Our goal was to take this individual into custody without anyone being hurt. And I'm here to tell you today that we accomplished that goal. And we accomplished it for a lot of reasons. There are a lot of people to thank for the goal that we accomplished. I have not spent or had not spent much time in the Janesville community, but I must say that the hospitality that, that I received and we received has just been, it's just been awesome. This is a, a wonderful community, and because of that, it almost uh, upped the ante on how important it was to get this individual into custody without anybody being hurt. So I'm so happy and, and pleased that we were able to accomplish this. I can say throughout this um, ordeal, I made a few friends, and the agents that we worked with and came together, they made friends. So this is indeed a, a, a very good day. It's a great day. I am going to ask for your patience uh, a, a little bit because we still have, even though this is a, a, a great moment, um, I like to sometimes use a sports analogy, but this is just halftime. We still have a case to pursue and to prosecute. Um, the case that we have is, is going to be unique because it too will mean the coordination and cooperation of federal and local prosecutors, as well as federal and state and local <coughs> investigators continuing to work together. So there are some things about this open, ongoing investigation that we are not going to be, be able to talk about, and some things that for the integrity of the investigation we will not be able to reveal. But I will say to you, we will tell you what we can, and I want to thank you for your interest because the media also played a very important role in keeping the community and, and the public informed about everything that was going on, and so thank you too to the media because your efforts kept this case, and it, it was not quick, it did not in 
or it did not last for a short period of time. This was a protracted thing, and the media interest uh, never waned. So uh, I appreciate everybody in, in the media for keeping this case out in the public eye and keeping the public informed on what was going on, and I think that helped to ease some of the concerns that the public had because there, there were a lot of concerns about this case and some of the uh, things involved in this case. So once again, I want to just thank everybody, and I especially want to thank the Jamesville community, Jamesville and Greater Rock County community. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, Jason Smith from the Wisconsin Department of Justice. Again, we're very pleased with the outcome and reiterate the fact that it's because of law enforcement's relationship with the community that we came to this outcome at the beginning and certainly at the end. Uh, DCI was able to contribute resources immediately, both tactical, uh, investigative, analytical, technical, uh, to this investigation at the beginning. But at, again, talking about the safety for the rest of the state is that DCI has offices strategically placed around the state, and we left a lot of resources because we didn't know the location of the target. And uh, again, at the end, uh, both from our Eau Claire and Madison offices, we were able to respond very quickly to the threat and continue to support uh, DCI and all of the law enforcement agents continue in the field completing this investigation. So again, thank you to the community for what they did at the beginning and end of this investigation. And I'll turn it over to the sheriff again for questions. I'm Adrian Pedersen with WI 10 12 News in Milwaukee. Um, those guns you mentioned, the guns being recovered, so what about the other 13 guns, including the machine gun? As ASAC Lee mentioned, the investigation is ongoing, and that will proceed accordingly uh, in an attempt to recover those guns. So could they be in a different spot than where he was found, possibly some still in Gainesville? Uh, and that, that's that's one of the things that, um, you know, it, we're, we're going to ask your indulgence because we're still going to need your help. There's still an investigation going on. Um, but there are some things about especially the location of the guns that we do not have in custody yet that strategically, for the sake of the case, we need to keep that information close to the desk for right now. But I can assure you, as soon as it is advantageous for us to uh, get that information out to the media, we will, because at some point we may be calling you to help us once again. Uh, Bill Walsh, CBS 58, Milwaukee. Uh, has anyone, and I'm not sure which agency, but has anyone been able to compare the written threat to the Sussex churches and the manifesto that was sent to the White House? And can, with, with any reasonable degree of certainty, can we tell if that threat is from Jack Lebowski, the Sussex Church threat is from Jack Lebowski, or it is different handwriting and it's, and it's a, a copycat or a hoax? Through investigation, we determined that that letter sent to the Sussex was likely not sent by Jack Lebowski. We're able to advocate that Kenny was on. He said he reviewed federal charges. If we do decide to move forward with them, what could they be? There are currently federal firearms charges, which the ATF are pursuing. There may be other charges based on how this investigation unfolds. What could those charges be? Again, as the investigation unfolds, we will decide what charges are appropriate with the U.S. Attorney's Office. With this investigation, do you think the suspect had a plan, or is this a man who was uh, hiding after he made that, the burglary? We believe he had a plan. Uh, we think that that plan uh, started uh, with him writing the document that he then mailed. We believe he then uh, had a plan that he was going to break into this gun shop. Uh, we believe that he had intended to steal the number of guns that he did steal, along with the handguns. He then took uh, his own vehicle, which we know he had great pride and joy in. He then drove that vehicle to a desolate area um, off of just north of where he committed the, the break-in and robbery. And we know then that uh, he fled from there uh, with those guns after setting his vehicle on fire. So uh, we are very much aware that he had a plan in place. As we've often said, uh, the problem that we had, the concern that we had, was that uh, what was his end game? How did he envision this ending for him and for our community? So 
we are fortunate that whatever his end game was, he was not able to complete it, and we were able to get him into custody. Do you think his end game was a mass shooting? We don't know. We haven't got information related to that. There have been no specific threats. Uh, but I can tell you that if you look at the document he sent the White House, he has an overall anger towards authority, towards the government, towards religion, towards the police. Um, he, it tends to ramble at times, but overall, he made no specific threats. But based on the fact that he, in, you know, in fact, took these guns, made an effort to hide his whereabouts, uh, made an effort to uh, basically uh, burn up his vehicle and disappear for as long as he did, uh, it was very clear to us that he had something in mind. What that is, we don't know at this time. Ron, not NBC News, you say that there's, there's no, threat of, or no credible threat remaining. Why should the community let a tear down with all these weapons still unaccounted for tonight? Because of the effort that you see here, and when I say the effort that you see here, I'm also including the media. Um, you, the, you guys did an awesome job in keeping the public informed. There were many opportunities where we could have had sensationalism, and that did not happen. And so we are very confident that we will be able to continue this investigation and recover every last weapon that's uh, that's still unaccounted for. So you're just as confident that he is not working with someone else or that these guns have wound up in the hands of someone who had similar bonds? That's, that's a part of the investigation that we're still working on. Angelica with Fox 6 News. Is it clear after he torched his car how he actually made the journey? And do we know uh, what kind of conditions he was living in? We are still making a determination. Uh, he's being uh, interviewed right now, and uh, we're still trying to make that determination how he got from our location, which is uh, in Northern Rock County, to where he was discovered. And what was the second part of your question? What kind of conditions was he living in? Um, I would say that they were very primitive, uh, <coughs> that the uh, area he was at was in a desolate area, um, that it really was just basically a tarp that he was uh, living in. Um, he looked disheveled. He uh, appeared that he hadn't slept in some time. So, uh, you know, basically it was a very primitive area, and uh, we were fortunate that this individual, uh, the landowner, uh, was out and about and was able to find him. So you haven't recovered a, a vehicle that he might have used to get there? We, right now, are making a determination whether or not uh, what type of vehicle, if there was a vehicle. All of those things are yet to be determined based upon, you know, what our interview so there's no vehicle in, in, in custody. That's correct. You said that there were flammable liquids found with him at the time, in addition to all those weapons. How do you know there isn't something planted someplace that, you know, is set to go off, that you got you got him, but you didn't get everything, so? Um, an assessment of those um, is such that we don't consider that um, to be um, a threat as of now, with those flammable li liquids. Um, and we, again, the investigation is ongoing, and we don't assess a threat right now uh, from him or anybody associated with him. Tony Galli, WKOW Madison. Uh, previously, did you have any <coughs> tips or intelligence developed that would indicate this was his direction? And if so, were you starting to close in on him, absent this tip? The tip was very helpful. Did you have a sense that he might have been traveling uh, to the to the northwest? That he had moved uh, perhaps 128 miles away from Janesville? There was there was a significant amount of leads that we were following up on, um, which ranged uh, in, in various locations. But again, this tip was very helpful. Will the citizen get the twenty thousand dollar reward? So. That that will be determined. Okay. Uh, ben Jordan, today's TMJ4 out of Milwaukee. Is there any reason to believe he got help along the way to get 128 miles away? Again, that's what the investigation is going to determine. We have an arrest. We still have an investigation to complete. What is his state of mind uh, now that he's in custody? If you can comment on any of that uh, with interviews. Was he agitated? Has he been cooperative? Uh, is, has he spoken with investigators at all? As, as the sheriff mentioned, he's currently being interviewed. And again, I, I want to say, and as we pursue this investigation, it is cooperative amongst all law enforcement agencies. So we are sharing information constantly to, an, to answer those questions that you are now asking us. 
Uh, and again, I want to thank DCI for Jason Smith, Chief Moore, um, Sheriff Sloden, and ATAC Joel Lee, because this is, still remains a cooperative and collaborative investigation, and all these questions that you are asking will be forthcoming as we determine uh, those answers. Is that machine gun still somewhere on the street, and where's Jakubowski now? I know he's going to be doing an interview. Um, Jack, Jakubowski will have an initial appearance in uh, Madison in federal court. Uh, uh, at about approximately 3 p.m. this yeah. afternoon. And again, uh, the investigation is ongoing with respect to the weapon. So he won't say what that long gun was that he had with him? Again, the investigation is... Oh, no. Was the, suspect, was the suspect aware of how big the manhunt had become, how many people were involved, and did the suspect have any major communication on him, like a cell phone? Or? No, he, he didn't. And, uh, you know, they're going to make a determination whether or not he knew. Uh, the sense is, is that what he, the statement that he had made to the individual that uh, came across him was that he wanted to be off the grid. And, you know, the fact of it is, is that our last sighting was the Tuesday uh, that he <coughs> did the robbery. So, in essence, he really was off the grid. And if you were to see the area where he was, he was in a very... Uh, densely, or I should say, a very dense wooded uh, type area. So, um, whether or not he realized it, um, it's unknown to us. Um, I can tell you that uh, there wasn't any type of electronic devices that we found there. Um, it was, again, it was very primitive. Morgan Wolf, NBC 15. Now, there are 26 agencies involved in this, six federal. Any ballpark estimates on how much this investigation yeah. cost? No, we, we have not even started to look at that from our standpoint. I can tell you is that um, whether it was state, federal, or local, um, we were committed to this, and we were going to do whatever it took uh, to bring this individual to justice, and we were going to do whatever it took to bring a sense of security, not only to James and Rock County, but to the United States as well, because this was not just a local manhunt. This was a national manhunt, and all the resources that the FBI, the ATF, State of Wisconsin, um, you know, and Rock County and Janesville brought, um, we used in our belief that uh, we needed to get this individual into custody. Uh, Sheriff, you're well aware that J Jakubowski in the past has confronted law enforcement officers, attempted to take weapons, become <coughs> physical with them. Can you describe his demeanor early this morning when the sun rose and law enforcement officers engaged him? I, I can't I can't say what his demeanor was. Okay. I, I, I can tell you that um, you know he surrendered without incident. I can tell you that uh, there was no use of force. Um, I can tell you that uh, the officers um, had a very good tactical positions on him, and so uh, basically it was ended without incident. And that's what we had hoped for. That's what we had prayed for, and that's why to echo again what Chief Moore said, it ended up being a very good Friday. I don't, a lot of people don't understand what tactical <coughs> means. Can you? Can someone just lay out for us step by step how they closed in on him or whatever they did on this hillside or field, wherever, whatever it was? Well, I, I'm not going to get into tactics. I can tell you that what we try to do is set up, first of all, you have to set up a secure perimeter, which uh, the two sheriff's offices did. And they secured it so that uh, he wasn't able to elude authorities. Then what happens is that we bring in other tactical officers who then look at the basic overview of the land, make any, you know, what they believe is a proper approach, and set up teams, and then those teams enter. It could be something that takes a great deal of time to get to, because obviously you have to be methodical, you have to be careful. Uh, but they were able to move in a way that um, he did not detect them, and they were able to move in a way that he was brought into uh, justice without incident. And again, no law enforcement officers were hurt, no citizens were hurt, and uh, he wasn't hurt. Was so. he in a tent? Was he asleep? Uh, again, uh, mm -hmm. we know that he was in the tent, whether and what he was sleeping or not is not really what we know at this sure. time. But, uh, but the total manpower, uh, would you say in that area? In that area? No. Combined? No, up there. Okay. Um, it's just an estimate. I, uh, it would be about at least 60 to 70 law, 70 law enforcement officers. 60 to 70? 70 law enforcement officers in that area, yes. Why were you so confident that this was going to require this kind of response? You got a call from this this farm owner, right? Two after seven, I guess. Did he take a picture of him? This is a pretty aggressive response for an unknown subject, would you say? Well, given the level of threat, no, it's not. 
an inappropriate, inappropriate response. And, and, and secondly, it was a very good tip. It was, it, it was specific enough to generate that appropriate level of interest. Um, you talked about the several agencies who worked on this. Which agencies specifically directed this? It was a, it was a combined effort of the agencies that I, that I listed, uh, but, for, but agencies that were on the scene during the rest were both the, the uh, Vernon County Sheriff Richfield County Sheriff, uh, excuse me, Richland County Sheriff, um, uh, FBI uh, from three different offices, um, Rock County Sheriff, and uh, DCI. And is there someone else besides the farmer who could possibly get part of the reward? Because um, you mentioned this tip, was that good tip from the farmer or from someone else? It was a good tip from the farmer. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, there are indications that people outside of Wisconsin have received this manifesto of Jakubowski's. Can you give us a sense of how widely he was trying to distribute his information and how widely he was trying to network? Uh, sure. Uh, we know that he sent out several copies. We believe the estimate could be up to 25. Um, he sent some to his associates, some of his friends that he has uh, friendships with. Uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, we don't know. That's why we have had, and, and we were not surprised by it, but that's why we had some of the news agencies were receiving copies of it um, and were posting it or were calling us and asking about it. Um, we don't have a roster of who we sent them to, um, but we do know he sent out a number of them. Were you concerned that it was a call to arms that others, as he remained a fugitive, might become accomplices? Well, you know, honestly, I have to be honest about that, is that what I find uh, unique about this was that he did. He called for revolution and for the masses to rise up and for those who he felt were enslaved to free themselves, as he put it. Uh, but quite honestly, the opposite effect happened, is that he brought the country together, he brought our community together, and instead of creating a revolution, what he did is he helped improve uh, the trust and the, uh, I would say, the overall um, attitude towards law enforcement in a very positive light because of the types of cards and support that we got, not just locally, but from across the country. Um, the people supported our efforts. They realized what uh, he was proposing was dangerous and what he, was, what he represented was not in the, really, the finest traditions of a democracy and in the United States. Was it, can we just talk about the hours from the time the first teams got on the scene last night to the time you engaged with them? This morning was it? Did you just take that long to establish the perimeter? Did you decide tactically to wait until daybreak to actually go in after him? Again, um, the two sheriffs' office actioned uh, the information they received. It was provided to us, and a decision was made to have the appropriate amount of resources on scene before uh, trying to take him into custody. Any of the arresting officers wearing body cameras at the time Jakubowski was apprehended? We don't have that information. That would be a question you would probably have to ask the local authorities. Um, and Jamesville is a close-knit community. Has anyone contacted his family? If so, what is the response that they have? Jamesville is a close-knit uh, community, and um, I can tell you that we probably reached out via the media uh, to the families that he's been in, in custody. We've not uh, reached out specifically to family members at this point. All through this investigation, as best we can tell, um, family, friend, and associates have cooperated with the uh, questions and interviews uh, of the investigation. Where the perimeter before the arrest today, was there, in addition to the manpower, other heavy equipment, any other thing you can describe that was used? Again, it's, it's an excellent question, but I'm not going to speak to tactics um, for the sake of the officers to go out and arrest folks like this. Yeah. Um, do you have any information that he had been uh, hunkered down or, or located in any other place besides this place from the time he left town and uh, to the time you caught him? Uh, again, that's something that we're going to be making a, you know, more information as we get further in this investigation. It's, it's still really early. You have to understand that uh, he was taken into custody uh, in the early morning hours, and then we had to get him into Madison. And these interviews, most importantly, what we're trying to do now with interviews is look for uh, public safety's best interest, and that's what we're doing right now with the interviews. 
Any indication if the suspect has any history of mental <laughs> problems, mental illness? Not, not that we were made aware of. Um, we have not had any indication during our course of our investigation that he had any mental illness. Um, so that, that really never came into play. This will be the last question. There's been a represent, representation to us that Jakubowski was at a point where he was even eating grass. Is that consistent with you, with your beliefs about how long he could have pursued this run from justice? I can't comment what his diet was uh, in, in when he was out there in the, in the field, um, but I can tell you that uh, his appearance to us and to the or to the officers who took him into custody was one that had been living in a very primitive campsite, and by uh, what we saw there, it was very primitive. All right, thank you, everyone. This concludes this press conference.